Hi, Brother Sewing and Crafting family. I'm Angela Wolf, and we are at your side virtually. I'm a Brother Brand Ambassador, and we have a super fun show today with May. If you know May's coming on, we've got something super creative, and I'm sure the scan and cut is involved. So say hi, see where you're from if you've never been here before. We are live on Brother Sews and Crafting YouTube and Facebook page, and I can see all of your comments. So roll in, say hi. If um, there's any, if you have any questions as we go through here, by the way, don't forget that we'll take little breaks to answer them. If you're on YouTube, if you subscribe to the channel, you can come back and watch this anytime and you'll be alerted every time we have a live video. And not only that, if you're on Facebook, share this to your page and then you can go back and watch the rerun. So hello everyone and let's not make May wait any longer. Hi May, how are you? Hi, good to be here, always Great. fun. Great to see you. So I have a surprise for you, except it's not ready yet, but I have a surprise. It'll be ready by next month. But I went shopping to my local craft store and I bought a few different watercolor paper and some watercolor pens and even the little water one that you have. I'm so excited. Now I haven't taken any of them out of the package yet, but uh, my mom said, what are you doing? And I said, I'm following May. I got to try this to make cards. So I, I love it. I'm so excited. Well, your timing couldn't be better because we're going to play with watercolors and watercolor pens today. Yay, I'm very excited. So maybe I'll take them out of the package. <laughs> At least I got the first part finished. <laughs> so what are you going to show us today? Everyone's rolling in. They're very excited about this. So today what I have been working on here is I have been working on cards and things for just for spring for mother's day for birthdays all that kind of fun stuff and we're at that time of year when i really want to use a lot of florals and bright colors and you know get rid of the winter blahs and really embrace springtime so we're going to be using the scan and cut not to well we are going to cut but not to cut anything directly that would be used on the card which sounds kind of funny but there's something you can do where you can cut out masks or stencils and use that so that you're getting pattern and design onto your card or onto your project, but you're doing so in a way that's so much quicker and easier than the old way where we used to have to hand cut all of our own shapes out and then try to make everything line up. So it's much faster, much easier. And I'm excited. I think you guys are gonna like it. It's a lot of fun. Oh, I'm very excited. All right, so everybody's here. Hey, everyone, and don't forget, you can ask your questions, and I'm not going to interrupt May, but I'll take little breaks in between, and we'll see if, if we can answer any questions for you. So, May, take it away. Okay, well, if we go over to the scan and cut, what we'll do, the first step that we'll do, so what this is, you can purchase specialty masking paper that is Think of it like masking tape, but it's paper that's specifically made for this. What I have here, this is just a shipping label. This is a half sheet of shipping label. And I'm gonna use that because I happen to know that it'll work okay. It's not quite as perfect, but it works just fine. And then what I'm going to do is take some stamps and you can use any stamps that you like. Uh, we went in depth about cutting out with the scan and cut about what kinds of things it needs. And the bottom line is, you need to have an outline. So it needs to have a clear outline. It needs to be able to see what it is that we want it to cut out. So as long as you have a clear outline, you're good to go. What we're going to be doing, you might be wondering, well, why are you stamping on this paper? You wouldn't want to use that on your card. And that's correct. I do not want to use this on my card, but that's actually the whole point. We're using these different floral stamps. And again, you can use any stamps that you like but we're using these floral stamps to create masks. So this will be used, and you'll, once you see it, it'll make a lot of sense and it'll be magic. We're going to use this to really get our images to be able to layer on top of each other on the stamped image, on the card, but you're gonna be able to layer in a really neat way. It's kind of hard to explain until you really see it, but this is the first step is getting yourself set up with some leaves. And I always like leaves and flowers are a great one. You could do little animal stamps or you could do whatever you like. But I really do find that I like to cut a few extra. So I want a few more that I think I'm going to need. 
I don't want so, to. Hey, May, while myself. you're doing that, um, so those are uh, stamped. And these are just stamps, yes. Did you make those or did you purchase those? These are, per yeah, these are just purchase stamps. I didn't make these stamps. Okay. Um, these are just some spring stamps that I went digging in the closet and I went, what have I not used in a long time? And this was the answer. So this is what we're going to use. Okay. So you can do as many as you want or as few as you want. It's really personal preference. How many you think you're going to use. I don't like to stamp. Oops. I didn't stamp all the way. There we go. I don't like to stamp too many extras just because I usually don't save, but I want to make sure I have enough so that I can really layer and get a cool look here on our stamped card. So once you have that done, that loud removal of the dust cover. I'm using a low tack mat just because I have a pretty new low tack mat and I don't want and I also have a brand new regular mat. The brand new regular mat can be really, really sticky, which is a wonderful thing, except if you have a paper like this that the backing maybe would tear, you wouldn't want that to be happening. So I'm loading the mat. Okay. Let's see. Okay, so we are going to go into scan, and we're going to go to direct cut. So this is the same process if these were stamped images that we wanted to cut out and use for whatever reason, um, this would be the same process that we would use. And it's going to scan them in. So that's the nice thing. If you want to start making masks you're, or stencils, you're not using a different process. It's the same process. It's just that what material you put in and how you're using it is going to be a little different. Okay, and once it's done, you put okay, and you'll see all of these different lines pop up, and these lines are really just showing us what the Scan and Cut recognizes as possible cut files. And I'm bringing the corners in because that will automatically eliminate any little mat scratches and other things that we don't want. And I can see, I think this one is kind of having some troubles, but that's actually okay. We can still work with that. But everybody else is looking really good. Everything, all the outlines are looking like they cut, or they will cut, I should say. So I can zoom in here to give myself a better look at what exactly. This one's actually looking just fine. It's just that it's very, very finely detailed, but you can really see how it's showing outlines. Now this one, it doesn't like so much because this one, and I'm looking down at my stamps, this one did not have a nice clear outline. So this one is not liking the stamp very much. I'm actually not gonna worry about that. And I'll show you why after we cut it out. If we, if we were concerned about this, we would just want to fix it. So to fix it, what we would do, and you can see it right here, I'll fix it just so you guys can know how to fix it. You're just gonna take a pen. So the problem is that the line was not solid. So the line did not read as solid. So it's trying to go inside now, especially because what we're trying to do here is create a mask. So we're not even going to use this paper or this stamped image. It's going to be used temporarily and discarded. So it really, we can really just play with that and go ahead and work around that in whatever way we need to. So if I scroll down, I can see, yep, everybody else looks good. Okay, so to rescan, what I'm gonna do is just hit the home button and just rescan. Only takes a second, and I really don't have to move anything. We're just rescanning to make sure that we get everybody correctly. I love this, it's so quiet. I it know, is, it is so nice and quiet. Uh, Marion, yes, she is using, you said uh, shipping stickers, right? Shipping I'm using labels? shipping labels, yes. There is specifically masking paper that is made for this. I just have so many shipping labels that I'm trying to use that up. You do, I'll show you too, when you use a shipping label, if it's super sticky, I just use my, I just touch it with my hands for a second or two before I put it down, which I'll show you. That just makes sure that, it's not too sticky, that it's not gonna to try to permanently adhere to our paper. 
I'm excited oh. to watch this. I actually have a ton of shipping labels. Some of them have like little pieces that it printed wrong and I hate throwing them away. They're so expensive. They are. And that's, yeah, that's why. I, and it is, it isn't a pricey. Okay. So now we can see that it perfectly fixed the issues that I had. Now what you can do, it's up to you. You can, if you want to pull in so that only certain, if you want to pull in from the outline or out, you can. The advantage to going inside the outline at all would be that if you're masking, you'll get the lines to go exactly precisely right on top of each other. I am going to just leave it at zero though. And we're going to go ahead and cut. And you can do it on half cut if you want the, if you want it to do half cut so that the sticker material will cut, but the backing won't. This particular paper that I have, this particular shipping label, I actually like to just cut the whole thing out. So I have half cut turned off so that I'm actually gonna cut the whole thing out. And that's just because this particular shipping label, I don't know, it's a little, it's a little funky with how it does it and, and it's really easy to peel off the backing. So I actually just prefer to have them cut all the way out and I'll show you one of the reasons why as soon as it finishes here, which will be in just a moment. So this is a fun way by cutting out the labels the way I am on the labels for our, before we mask, I'm actually gonna be able to kind of plan out and see what my design is going to look like with these sample stamps before I actually do the real stamping and the real masking. I'll be able to see what it's going to look like and kind of build my scene, which is helpful to me because I don't always have a good vision on how this is gonna work or what it's gonna look like. That's a great idea. And there it goes, just quiet as can be. It's so Cut. quiet. Hey, babe, while that's cutting, um, Marcy has a, a good question. And we've, we've touched on this before, but um, maybe she missed one of those episodes. What is the best way? Do you have a, a favorite way of cleaning your mat? I know both of us do, but uh, getting all the little pieces off when you have little so fabric. So I always use um, use a wet wipe, just not, not one of the alcohol ones but one of the ones like for babies that are no, no alcohol or disinfectant or anything like that, just the plain wet wipes. And then I tend to work um, from the middle out just to kind of get things pushed out. And that works really well to get um, anything. If I get a dog hair, um, whatever it might be on there. That's so, a good tip going from the middle out. I never even thought about that. So what I will do before I move this, I just kind of bend it especially if it's a material like this that I've had issue with in the past. I just kind of bend it and make sure it looks like everybody's popping off of the mat before I move anything. That way, if for some reason, I don't know if my blade was dull or if something was just not quite working right, what we would be able to do is fix that before we move it so we could recut. Because once I remove this, I really, there's really nothing else I can do about it once I've removed this. And oh, wow, I still can, fantastic. I can still keep this and cut more things out too. So we're going to just pull everybody off. And this one, will, I can't believe this cut out all those little tiny pieces all together. Probably won't use that one because that's just going to be your mat up just, a, just a wee bit just so they can see what you're doing there. They can oh, see the pieces coming yep. off. There you go. Yeah, that looks great. So, like I said before, we could I could have done half cut on this. And somewhere I have my little spatula tool that makes this easier. Somewhere. <laughs> that spatula tool is always, I swear, it is always in my way until I need it and then it hides. And things like, you see how I'm getting, you know, you really don't want to put your fingers on your mat the way I am as much because you can see I left little ink marks and, you know, little dirt, but that's where that wipe comes in as it can pull off all of them for me. Okay, so we have our little mess. So what I was mentioning is what we can do, and we'll come down here a bit, go. So what we can do is lay these out to see what it would look like 
where we would put these things and just kind of give ourselves a view of what this is gonna look like once it's stamped and everything. So you can kind of build. Oh my gosh, I love that, May. So you can build an image of, okay, well, I like this or I don't like this or, okay, I think that this works for size, you know, size wise or whatever look that you're looking for. And I can even I want one of just one of those. If I want a layer thing. So I can get kind of a look of, okay, so this is kind of what it's going to look like. Now you can imagine if I had just stamped everything, the ink lines would be very chaotic they would be overlapping each other and it would be problematic at best and that is why we did what we did with the masking because now i can slide all of this off and we can pick to start with whichever stamp that we want and i'm just using an archival ink which is an ink that won't react with water that's the one important step now for us is something that won't react because we don't want with um, watercolor, if we're gonna be watercoloring, we don't want the ink to be reacting and causing problems here. So then what you do, this is where the mask comes in. So we peel this off. And I mentioned that if you think you're, if you're using a shipping paper and you're worried it's a little sticky, just just touch it for a moment. <laughs> you know how that works, how you can unsticky something. And then you just line up your image. So what I've done here is, and it's gonna look messy. We're gonna go along here and it's gonna look real messy. But what I've done here, and I'm getting ahead of myself, let's see, stamping now. What this is going to do is it's going to give me the ability to layer stamps. So the one thing to remember is anything you stamp first is actually going to be at the top. So whatever you stamp and mask first is going to be at the very front and whatever you're masking last is going to be a bottom layer. Because while I am stamping this whole leaf, for example, it's going to be underneath the flower when we go and peel everything off. It kind of goes opposite. And then what I will do on these outer ones where I know I'm not going to stamp more things over the top of them, I don't, I don't mask them. I leave them alone. I really just add the masking to the ones that I know are going to need it. Like this one here. Let's see. And I would say the only real tricky part is making sure you line up the image correctly. Okay, and then let's see, we'll go with that one next. And it doesn't take very long, actually. It's, it's especially if the scan and cut, you can imagine how long this would take if we didn't use the scan and cut. If we didn't use the scan and cut, this would take a very long time. I would but, like, <laughs> till next May? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, and that's what, you know, with the card making, that's what we used to do. Well, it actually, some people still do. If you don't have a scan and cut, there's not really an easy way to get these precise cuts for this, all the different stamps. Because most of the time, if you have, um, even if you have like a special die cut or something for the stamp, it's going to have an outline. You don't control the outline in this. There we go. I just always take, I just try to take a moment and you don't stress if it's not perfect, of course, that's okay. We're not gonna worry about it if it's imperfect, but I do try to just kind of make sure everything is a nice, nice little organized little stamp there. And it does look very, very messy and you can, so this is what it really would look like if we went and tried to stamp all of the things all on top of each other and did not mask, this is what it would look like. And this is the why as to why do you mask? Why do you want to do that? And this is the, this is absolutely the reason because if we don't, it's very, very messy and chaotic and it doesn't look pretty at all. 
And you might notice I kind of give the stamp before I cover it with the mask, I just give the ink a minute to set. Not a long time or anything, but I just kind of make sure that I'm not just immediately putting more on there. And let's see, I think we have, could do another small flower, that would be good. And you can keep going, you could keep building on this really as much as you would like to, to do. I am gonna cover that up because I'm gonna add a couple more leaves. I think it's really fun. And what I think is really fun is something like this, you build yourself a bouquet and you can just, you can see what did I, okay, well, what did I make? What, how did it go? What is that gonna look like? And then you find out, which is always fun. Find out what that's gonna look like. Oops. This is really cute. I never would have even thought about this. And I can definitely see the advantage of it now. I mean, it just makes it look so, I mean, this is gorgeous. So this guy, I just, no, actually I don't need a cover on that one. I just need a cover on that one. And I kind of think about if I need to cover it or not as well as I'm going along. If I think, oh, well, you know, I really better because I'm going to stamp again and it's going to go over. Or if I think, you know what, nah, I can stamp around it or I can go around that. I don't need to to cover that. I do that as well, just because, you know, I can, I can think, I can give myself a moment there to think about it. It's just so much fun. And there's really no worst case. I mean, if you really don't like it, you can always either just don't use it or cover it up or come up with something else to do with it so that you do like it. Okay, so I think that's enough. That's a good amount of stamping there for us. So now what we can do, just setting everybody to the side. Now what we can do is just peel these up. And it's so, I always love seeing this because as you peel everything up, what you find is what it looks like all nice and clean and organized. This is, I'm laughing because I thought it looked good before. <laughs> now it really looks good. Yeah, now, now you're basically what you're doing is just making it so that you can stamp like a really complex layered scene or what have you and do so in a way, a little bit of paper there, there we go. But you can do it in a way that, yeah, you can see how it, and then when you pop it up, all those lines clean up and it's just so pretty. And it's like, wow, how did she ever do that? That looks really complicated. Well, actually not so much. A little bit time consuming, but not bad. <laughs> Sandra wow. says on my wish list, I'm still doing stamping the old way. <laughs> Sandra, you're so cute. <laughs> and I think, I mean, the scan and cut is obviously, I would not do this without the scan and cut very honestly, because it would just take so much time and so much effort to get this to work. So now what we can do, let's see. Now this is just, you can use a paintbrush and dip it in water or this is a water brush, which just means there's water already in my paintbrush. And then you can use, well, you can use whatever you would like, any kind of watercolor mediums or, I mean, really just anything at all, but we'll do the watercolor magic now. I'm using markers because here on the lives, you know what, here on the lives, the markers do a good job and they're easy to use and they're easy to transport and they're low mess. So if you're if you're liking the ideas of paints and things, but you don't like the idea of mess, think about watercolor markers because you can get a lot of the beautiful blending and colors with minimal fuss, minimal mess. You know, they don't take up much space all of that good stuff. I love that. Hey, Marsha, I see you want to know where she gets her uh, stamps from. It just probably just an art supply store, but I'll Any ask her scrapbook store, art store, craft store, pretty much anywhere that card making supplies would be found. There's so many and there are so many different 
sets available, colors available. You can find a lot of really fun stuff. Arnell says and it's like painting a picture. It sure is. It is. It's like you're making your own little coloring book page or paint picture to paint or whatever. And then you just go through and whatever colors you want, whatever you're feeling like. Super, super fun. And I just, I love how easy it is because we don't have to, you know, there's so much that, so much of the difficult part. I mean, the cutting is really tedious if you do it all yourself. So being able to really just go stamp, 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 and then color, 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 have fun is one of my favorite things about this. And I am working on a, just a standard watercolor paper. You don't have to work on watercolor paper, but if you're going to be using something like watercolor markers, it really is easier because this paper is made for using the water and blending and all of that good stuff. And if you do use it, then it just makes everything, it makes your life a little easier. And then you can go from there and you can do a little more blending where a, a standard piece of paper, you might start getting caught up on, um, you know, it might start to pill up or have problems because it is all of our crafting, as you know, Angela, it's always important to create with materials that work for whatever it is you're trying to create. I just love this. You know, I could definitely see just, you know, as we've talked through the year while you've been working on some of these fun projects, cutting a few of those out and just doing a set of like five or six, just so you have them on hand. Those would make great little thank you cards or, um, you know, just thinking of you cards, anything like that. I agree. And honestly, I like what I like to do is I'll just kind of make a few, you know, I'll be, a, be in a creative mood or have a little time and I'll just sit down and make a couple and then they're there. And then I've got them to send, which is always nice. Let's see. And I tend to do, well, I'm doing all the flowers first. It doesn't really matter. You can do the leaves as well. I just like to get all my flowers done and then I go back in and work on the leaves. And I kind of like to make, I like to mix it up. So some of them I'll make a lot more saturated, a lot more colorful, and then some of them I'll make more pastel. I just like to mix mix and match here. And the fun thing about the watercolors is you don't have to worry about if things match up just perfectly. That's okay. You don't have to worry about that. You can just go and create. And if it matches up, that's great. And if it doesn't, that's okay too. Don't worry about it. Nobody's, nobody's going to, there's no watercolor police that's going to come and stop you. And I actually think a lot of times the watercolor look, a lot of times it looks better if it's a little messy. I think. I think it looks, a lot of times it looks a little more, I don't know, it's almost like it looks more intentional if you let it be a little messy. I had to buy a couple different packages of pens because I couldn't find my favorite color pink in the same package that had, there was a discount. They had like a little sales section. Oh, <laughs> yes. Can't miss those. And so then I, I was ready to leave. I thought, uh-oh, there's no pink in here. I know. If that's always how it goes. That's how I end up with so many different supplies because <laughs> it always ends up where it's like, well, but wait, I wanted this color and that's not here. So, uh, Esther, uh, Esther said she'd make make it such a nice card. I'd keep everything for myself. That's so funny. <laughs> it's and, it can uh, be. Sure. You know what? Sometimes I'll make one that I really like, and I'll put it up on my shelf and let it set for a while. And then, you know, it could be months. It could be a year down the road. Then I'll go ahead and share it. So sometimes I'll keep one for a while because I just really want it to be around. That's a good idea. Then you get the beauty of it for a little while and then you send it on. And you share it. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. Sharon, you can uh, get those uh, color markers and washable markers at your local craft shop. Same place that you can get that uh, water. So the thing about the washable markers, though, you would just want to do a test. Wa the washable markers are not necessarily, uh, they don't necessarily blend like a watercolor. So you would just want to test if your washable markers blend or not, or if you care, if you don't care, if you just are good with 
you know, coloring the one color that you have and letting that be that, then you don't have to worry about it at all. You can just let that be the color that you're going to work with. So much fun. <laughs> Ar Arnell's super happy that you used some purple in there. I love purple, but I don't use I don't use it a ton because it can get kind of tricky with the other colors. But in springtime, for pink and purple bouquets, I have, that's I know I have a friend that likes to use a lot of yellow, but I end up going the opposite and going lots of purple, especially for springtime. Okay. I think we're getting, I think we're pretty much there. Look at that. Oh my gosh, that is so cute. Isn't that yeah. fun? And then if you want to add sentiments on top, if you wanted to add, I don't know, buttons and bling and things, if you wanted to add different stuff on there, you certainly can. I'll show you another version that I made. Here's another version, but same idea. Oh, you sewed it. This one I sewed. And this one, I added some stamps that were not outlined in black just to kind of try. I was just testing to see the black ones were all stamped and masked. And then the other ones were not. And I was just playing with it, just see, you know, what, what kind of ideas I came up with. And this one, if we wanted, the other thing you can do is after you've got your watercolor all done, you can trim this down and mount it onto a card. You could also, sometimes it'll happen where I just really like whatever I've created. You could also frame this. You could do a lot of different things with it. You don't have to turn it into a card. You could use it in your scrapbook. You could use it a lot of different places depending on what you felt like doing. That is so pretty. It's really, honestly, it's just really a lot of fun. I'm just reading all the comments. Everybody's saying this is so, someone said this is cheaper than therapy. <laughs> well, hopefully <laughs> you can get carried away. You could probably make it cost more than therapy. Yeah, I was going to say, have you been to the craft store lately? <laughs> we probably could make it more expensive. Oh, goodness. <laughs> this is beautiful. So, um, May, does, do any of you have any questions for me, by the way? I'll make sure I ask her now. I didn't see any rolling in that we didn't stop. Uh, Phyllis says this takes this takes patience. <laughs> she you needs know, to sew in clothing, but actually, pay, sewing clothing takes patience too. Sewing clothing takes patience too. For this, what I like about it is with the masking is there's a very clear set of you know we stamp and we cut it out and then we stamp and then we color. So there's a very clear way that you go about and do that. Um, so what I like about that is as long as I follow you know the steps in the way that the, in the order they need to go in it's always going to be fun and it's always going to turn out really pretty and i just i love being able to do that and yeah it does it takes a little more patience than not doing it but to me especially a couple times a year i'll pull that out and do a whole bunch of them and then i'm like okay i'm done for a couple months <laughs> i'm done we're good now um but that's kind of how i go with the crafting a lot where i'll get in a phase and i'll really want to do something a bunch and then I'm like, okay, we're done now. Hey, May, will you hold up that one with the sewing? Um, just one more time, close to the yeah. camera. I'm going to just bring this up. Someone asked, do you have any idea or do you remember what um, size stitch you used? I mean, you'd really want to test it, but. I usually have it set at, I want to say it's four. I want to say it's at, set at four. Like usually when I'm sewing, say like my masks or my lavender satchels or different things like that, I go down to like 2.5. But then yeah. when I'm sewing this for paper, I usually keep it up for even 4.5 because what we don't want to do is just create a tear because the holes were so close together. And unlike fabric, the paper is not forgiving. The paper is not going to like seal itself back around the stitches it's yeah. or, or flex. It's going to stay just as it is. So a yeah. longer stitch, I always just say a longer stitch is a better idea than a tiny I stitch. I agree. And the other thing is you don't need the seam ripper when you're doing this because that nope. isn't going to work. <laughs> no, no seam ripping. That's the other thing is it's one and done. So I always try to line up nice and straight, assuming that I'm going for a straight stitch, nice and straight and a little longer and just go a little slower than I would with fabric and just be okay with it's a little slower, but that makes sure because if you punch a wrong hole, it's there. You better be okay with it. 
<laughs> the only cover you can cover up for you can put something like a button or a sequin or something over it but you it's just always stitching on paper is a little more patience and just go a little slower and be a little more sure of what you're doing that's a good save by the way i never even thought about that put a little button or a uh, little sequins little uh bling you know you can buy some glitter glue rhinestone. there's a lot there's a number of things you can do but sometimes to be honest sometimes like this if we had you know if i had to cover up the stitches it would just not be the same for me right this you know i didn't intend i intended this intentionally to be a very flat card i did not intend for it to have a bunch of sequins and other things popping up on it so for me that would have been not tragic but i would have not been happy with that so i, I do try to, to i do try to think about that I was actually wondering this while you were doing this, uh, if you use different colors for your stamping. I love the stamps that have just a colored background and not the black on it with the mix. It looks great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. and that's a, that's a lot of fun too. I tend to do that if I'm going, if the stamp color that I'm doing is, if I want the stamp to be that color and I don't want to color it, I don't want to do other things, then that tends to be what I do with that. I tend to just, go ahead and stamp in color. You would have the same rules apply though. You would want an ink that does not react to water. If what you're going to do is do that and like layer a bunch of things on. If you have an ink that's reactive with, or acts kind of watercolor like, or reacts with other inks, reacts with moisture. If you go and stamp on top of it, you will get blending and bleeding and if that's okay if you like that then you're good to go but if you don't like that then you just want to kind of keep be aware of that that's a that's a really good tip also just if you could just take a sec and um let me see i think marcia had actually asked this but there was a few others that asked this as well and we talked about it at the beginning but could you just give them a rundown of yeah what paper so they should use i mean we you use shipping labels which you and i both have on hand but maybe some people don't have that could you give them some other ideas so shipping label is what I have a lot of right now and what I've been using. So that works really well. Um, there is specific stamping masking paper, and that is recommended for two reasons. Number one, it's not quite as sticky as, say, shipping paper. And number two, it's designed specifically to be really, it's really thin and it works really well on for masking. If you get a material that's too thick, then you're gonna have issues with getting your stamp on the edges when you go to stamp over it. There's gonna be kind of a divide. Like if you've ever tried to stamp on multiple layers of paper, sometimes it, there's kind of a divide and like a kind of an ugly little blank mark where it can't quite, the ink can't quite get. So you wanna be just aware of that. So the masking paper would be ideal. If you didn't want to actually do images, if you just wanted to mask off an area, you could use masking tape. So you could just get out your masking tape and mask lines, that's actually a painting I'm working on right now that I'll be having a video of probably later this month um, where I'm using masking tape specifically like that to mask off areas and things. If you don't have those things though and you're wanting to do stamping, I would probably use printer paper, really thin printer paper. And what you would have to do is after you have your masked image and you put your image down, you would just, when you go to stamp, you would just want to keep a finger on it to keep it in place and stamp over. So that would have no adhesive and it wouldn't stay put, but you could do it. I would say really thin printer paper, not just for the cost, but because it's really thin, so it's very low profile, so you wouldn't get into those issues with too thick of paper. Like a nice thick cardstock would be terrible because right. you're going to have that divide. So you could do it with printer paper, it just becomes a little harder and something like mine where I keep going and going and going, it gets a little chaotic without adhesive. You probably would not want to try to use like say vinyl as a material. I have done successfully used vinyl on, I had a big pumpkin that I used vinyl on instead of shipping paper. And it was 50-50. Some of it worked really well to peel off after and some of it didn't. I've used that successfully on wood projects or um, what was the other one? I had a canvas. I had a canvas that was painted and then I put vinyl down to use as a mask and then removed it. So it is possible to use that. You'll just want to be like for paper, it would just shred the paper. It would just tear the paper as you went to remove it. That's I think stickiness is something just to really think about when you're trying to work around. If you don't have 
shipping labels or you don't want to purchase masking paper. You just want to start to think about, well, what would work well, but also not destroy what could I'm they, trying to do. Could they use, you know, you can get this kind of inexpensive, but double-sided tape, just little pieces of double-sided tape as a backup, or will that mess up the paper underneath, do you think? You know, it'll kind of depend. Usually it's too sticky. Okay. Because like the tape rollers that I use, yeah. Those stick to the paper and you'd have to then come in with like um, a glue remover and try to remove the glue and it, you'd end up having such a mess of it. You probably end up abandoning it because then you have chemicals on the paper. So then the watercolor wouldn't react. Right. Right. And then it's 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 funny. Some of the some of the things that I would hope would work don't necessarily work. The other thing you can do if you're just trying to get a shape, a general shape, you could use like sticky notes. Sticky oh, notes is a good, good is a good is a good option, but really that's that super thin paper again. If you can do super thin material, you're always better off. You know what? I can't tell you what needle. It's it's just a stand what a standard range, all purpose sewing needle. So Esther, just you know, I'm just thinking. I have I've sewn on paper not often, but I think you know, just like when we're sewing uh, garments, she, I. Esther's in the wolf pack, so I know she sews garments. And so if you think like the needle goes with the size of the fabric, so you're using maybe a size 12 or 11 for knits or for a lightweight cotton, and then you go up to 14 for denim, that's the size of the needle, right? So if you want more distinct holes in your paper, like where you want it to be part of the decoration, then I would go with the bigger needle. Even a 14 would look cool, but I would test it first. But the bigger the needle, the bigger the hole. <laughs> and you could also use different threads in that too. You could use a denim thread or um, something like that too. So the needle will really determine the size of the hole, which is different than for fabric, but kind of similar. <laughs> is that how you'd explain it? <laughs> something That's like that. an interesting point because I hadn't really thought about, like I don't usually think about the hole size. I'm going to guess that I probably have a smaller um a smaller needle, you know, more stay you know, more for knits and cotton fabric needle in there. Uh, but that's interesting. Now you're making me want to find my denim needle and put it in there and seeing how I like the whole, like stylizing that. I think that would be a lot of fun. It would be. And you know, if you use different, you could put maybe two different colors of thread through one needle. Yeah. I mean, you could do a, I, I just can think of a lot of ideas on top of that. So I have an idea, mate. I don't know if I have enough patience to do the stamping. So you do that, you send it to me and I'll sew them all up for you. <laughs> There we go. Teamwork. <laughs> Actually, I'm gonna. I'm looking forward to trying my watercolor, um, and that will be a perfect paper to try that with. So I'll share it with you. So, hey, uh, could you just show your pen up close for uh, Jen? Yeah. So these are here. I'll show on the. I'll bring your. Other, there you go. Yeah. I'll bring this up close. There you go. So it's. I don't know, it doesn't want to blur. There it goes. So they're just. These are brush tip watercolor type markers absolutely for what i was doing here though absolutely anything from regular watercolor to what um oil pastels to inks that can be used as watercolor you could just be using a regular paintbrush and doing it so absolutely any watercolor or watercolor like product would work for this that's you have your, that's extra you fun do you have your water pen too, by any chance? Just to yeah. show that closely. Yeah. Now, guys, so this, this is not a brother product, but at least you can see what it looks like. Your hands are looking good, May. I can tell you've been working. <laughs> I know. You can you fill this up. Oh, I can't even. I think I'm I'm averaging like 20 projects a day right now. I'm just like <laughs> a wild woman of creativity right now and I absolutely love it but it takes it takes it I don't even try at this point I'm like as long as when I wash my hands every couple hours as long as there's no black ink coming off that's good enough oh that's so cute but this so this is the way it works is when you squeeze it and this is how you tell what type of crafting I'm doing too because when I'm doing sewing my hands are really clean and when I'm doing inky stuff so you press it and the water comes out and just kind of saturates the bristles and then you're able to do watercolor fun stuff but yeah you can tell what kind of crafting i'm doing based on the condition of my hands <laughs> i love that that would be a great project i'll bring all of my uh nieces and nephews over and be like here you go kids and then i'll send them home with their parents can be like what <laughs> did aunt angela do this time i'll blame it on you can them. tell when it's stamping time i always end up with black fingertips <laughs> and colorful and then if i'm in coloring then between my fingers somehow always ends up colorful 
Um, the good news is it all does it all does wash off fairly easily. I just don't want raw skin, so I don't try to between each go and go and wash it all off every single time. Yeah. I like that idea, Terry, using some old needles. I never even thought about that because I do have some old ones that would not be good on fabric. Maybe just put them in a little envelope. That's a great idea. Everyone's saying, I use old needles. See, we're always repurposing. Fantastic. <laughs> I think we got everyone. Uh, I saw someone asking about the Scan and Cut book, if you call your brother dealer. I saw somebody asking about the Luminaire XP2. Uh, when are they coming out? Those have been out. So contact your local dealer and find out uh, when those are out. So I'm just making sure I'm not missing any questions. Oh, Marsha wants to know, are they specifically called watercolor markers? Is that? Yeah, if you do a search for watercolor markers, there's all kinds of options that come up and all kinds of videos that you can watch to compare um, features. And they're all a little different, but they're all they all basically do the same thing. Excellent. Uh, do you ever use? Oh, I saw these, Marion. So, May, do you ever use watercolor pencils or do you prefer You know what? I did and I used them up and I've just never replaced them. <laughs> oh, I saw those there at the store because there's a huge, you know, there's a big selection and it's kind of overwhelming a little bit. So if you, by the way, I put May's website down below. So those of you that want to watch and learn more of this, that's her website. She has a ton of YouTube videos so you can really polish up on those. But that, Marion, I was thinking the same thing. I was looking because the pencils were on sale, and I was like, "No, she uses the pens. I'm going to buy the pens." So <laughs> but the only now thing I might go back the get the pencils. pencils. The only thing with the pencils is they can be a little trickier. I tend to show the pens anyway, or regular watercolors, because it's a nice, liquid, fluid, smooth color, and it's always the same. It's very easy to be very consistent. With the pencils, sometimes if you rub too hard or depending on how you're doing them, or if the paper's dry or wet, you can sometimes get like more like harsh lines, pencil lines, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, and that can be a little trickier or a little discouraging. I love the I love the watercolor pencils for a lot of different things though. I like them, they're, they're just a lot of fun. It's the same kind of idea, but it's just a different format. And it's cleaner, too. <laughs> I, oh, cleaner. That's even better. I just thought of something. I do all of my, before I do a pattern, design a new pattern, or uh, I'm working on a cool design with some new fabric, I always sketch the garment first. That would look awesome with watercolor pencils because I like that that's how I'm oh, used to sketching. Would. So that would be a very easy hand and then just make that it just a little beautiful. bit. That would be beautiful. I'm going to yes. test that. Yes. And the water brush, so all you have to do to clean the water brush is give it a squeeze and if you have, you know, if you have a um, surface, you can just kind of wipe it on. Just give it a squeeze. The water will push through any color off and out. Um, you don't have to, but if you're trying to go between colors or change colors, or if there's a little color on there, that's all it takes. So I love how easy that is. <laughs> Great question, Lorraine. I agree. <laughs> okay, Louise, I, I am laughing about this, though. She says this would be a great project for on the airplane for long plane rides. Anybody sitting next to you would be completely freaking out. <laughs> but that would be something great. No, you know what? They don't freak out. I've done it a bunch. Really? Nobody, yeah. They, yeah. I take the, yeah, I'll take my, my pens um, if I have a long flight because you can take the water brush on. The water That's brush is fine. A great idea. I, I would be, um, I would be enamored. I would. Be, can I sit by that person over there? Because I got to so see what's I going had, on. I had a coloring. It was a small, like postcard size coloring book, um, on watercolor paper. And so I had that. So I just sat there coloring and coloring. It was so much. It was super fun. Um, and it's yeah, it's a great thing. I usually do hand embroidery on flights, um, just for space. But if I have extra space or if I'm having like, let's say I'm traveling for work and I need my markers anyway and they can come with me, then they're on the plane. That's a lot of fun. That's a great idea. Yeah, because you can't bring scissors hardly anymore. I have these like itsy bitsy snips that I was able to pass the test with. I used to do hand, not hand embroidery. I used to do uh, trims for my jackets on the plane. Oh, okay. Very fun. I think uh, I'm going to have to fly with you sometime, May. <laughs> yeah. I think we got everyone. Let's make sure I'm not. Oh, I see one more. Um. Oh, do you have to change the tension? Susan wants to know, when you've sewn with the sewing machine, have you made any adjustments? No. 
Yeah, I I've haven't never, either. I never needed to. Um, the only time when I used to need to change the attention is a long time ago. I had a very inexpensive machine, um, passed a pass down, very old, very inexpensive, very difficult to sew with. <laughs> and you had to be adjusting the tension. I mean, while you were sewing on things, you would, I would decide it was too tight or it was too loose. And it was, and actually that's how I got my first brother machine was I was just in tears and so tired of fighting just to get a couple of stitches in on paper that I went down to my local brother dealer and told them what I needed. And then it was, they were just like, oh, come here, let us show you something. <laughs> <laughs> and changed my whole world. But uh, you, other than that old, old machine, ever since I've never had to adjust the tension on most machines, you would not need to. Yeah, I, I agree. And if for any reason you are sewing and the thread is like floating on the top or not going all the way through, depending on what machine you have, some of the you know settings are within the machine on the more expensive ones. But if you have one of the more less expensive ones, there's a little dial on top for tension. You could just mm -hmm. adjust it one or two just to make sure it looks good. And then there's always like a section where you know to go back to normal. So, but that's, I have not had that happen either. But it really depends on the paper, how thick, what thread you're using. Um, Arnell, do you need to seal them? Oh, like the thread? Gosh, you could do one back stitch or a stay stitch. Did you? I usually do one back stitch, and then what'll happen usually is on the after I've sewn, I would actually be then adding adhesive and gluing it onto my finished card. So that adhesive acts as a sealant of sorts to keep everything in place. But I've never had problems just with like one or two back stitches in my scrapbooks and they're good to go. Excellent, excellent. Oh, you're welcome, Susan. All right, I think I got everyone. I'm just gonna bring your cards up one more time here. Just uh, yeah. show these, these are so cute. Oh, you're welcome, Marsha. Thanks so much. Those are so cute, May. So I can hardly wait to see what you're gonna be working on in May. The springtime is always so much fun anyways, but this is a great idea and if you, for those of you that have not watched a lot of these shows or you're new to watching uh, even the brother shows, well, you have May's website down below. I always put the replay on my website as well in case you're just binge watching. But there are so many. May has been on once a month for the last, <laughs> even more sometimes, for the last year. And you can go back and watch all of these episodes, uh, which if you're trying to learn how to do this or you're new to using the scan and cut or you're new to using <laughs> watercolors, which is my favorite, <laughs> you can go through there and um, and watch all of those. So I'm just gonna take this back down. You're welcome, Susan. <laughs> so May, you have any last uh, words for everyone? And we'll, looks like we got everyone's questions. Well, we're mid April and that means just in my world for anybody who's wanting even more content, the 1st of May is International Scrapbooking Day. And I'm actually, that's why my hands are so messy is I'm working on a bunch of projects for that. So anywhere you go, either on my website, Facebook or Instagram, you can find a link to all the information. But I've got a huge free class going on and free events and lives and all kinds of fun stuff going on for that. And then there's also new class kits and new fun stuff to do if you want me to mail you a kit so you can craft along with me. We've got a bunch of that fun stuff going too. Oh, that's very exciting. All right, so you have her website down below. Don't forget to follow her on YouTube. And if you want to watch all the Brother Sews shows, you can go back if you're on Facebook, share it to your page, and you can watch it very easily there. Be sure to follow uh, Brother Sews or Crafting or both on uh, Facebook. And then on YouTube, just subscribe to the channel and you'll get a little pop-up when we go live and you'll never miss one. I love that feature, by the way, because then I watch all the, I always binge watch these on my TV, which is great. <laughs> I do too. I love to watch them while I'm crafting or while I'm doing it, cleaning up or something. And, and I get to have that inspiration in there. Love them. Yes. And I always learn something new or even ones always. that I've actually been hosting or teaching. <laughs> There's still more stuff to learn out there. So this is awesome. So May, I'm looking forward to seeing you next month. And for the rest of you that are watching, don't forget that this afternoon, Cindy Hogan will be on with Software Shut-In. That's at 4.30 Eastern. Tomorrow, 1.30 p.m. Eastern, we're going to be doing the show and tell for the Rachel twin set behind me. I have to finish my tank top for the show tomorrow. So everyone who has posted their photos, I'll be showing all of those off. We have Emily tomorrow at 3. And these are all Eastern time. 
And then again, on Thursday at noon, Jerry's going to be on. I'm very excited for what he's working on. That'll be at noon Eastern, your time. So mark your calendar, or you can always come and watch the replays. So May, I'm looking forward to following on YouTube until next month, and you have a wonderful day. Thank you, you too. Bye, everyone. Thanks for watching. Brother, thanks for letting us take over your page.